If you wonder what is Season of Conquest in Rise of Kingdoms, you have come to the right place. Let's go! What's going on my beautiful governors, welcome to a new Rise of Kingdoms video. Today we will talk about every major thing that you should know before you play your first Season of Conquest. Before we start, as always, I want to thank every single one of you for supporting the channel and here our latest subscribers, thank you guys so much for being here. Now, let's talk about the Season of Conquest. This is simply a new Kingdom vs Kingdom that you play after you're done with your first 3 KVKs. We won't talk about the map, we won't talk about the layout, pass openings, etc. We will talk about the major things, things that everyone must know. For now, we have two options, Heroic Anthem and Strife of Eight. There are some differences between them, but let's start with similar things. In Season of Conquest, there are two new buildings. Those are Crystal Mine and Research Center. In Crystal Mine, your city produces crystals and in Research Center, you unlock new technologies with that crystal. There are many other ways to earn crystals and we will talk about those in a second. This crystal technology is the main reason why free-to-play and low spenders are not happy with this KVK mode because all these Vortec can be unlocked in a short time if you are spending a lot of money on crystal bundles. However, with the next update, Lilith disables going back to KVK2 with a large group so if you want to keep playing with the group that you have, you will have to play Season of Conquest. Hopefully, the changes they will make to Crystal Tech in a short time will satisfy free-to-play players and everyone will be happy, but I doubt that. So how can you get more crystals apart from Crystal Mine as a free-to-play player? You get them by killing Barbarians, destroying Barbarian Forts, completing Bastion Quests and killing Kahar. But the more important thing is how to spend your crystals. Which technologies you should unlock first, how deep you should go, That's what she said. <laughs> or which ones to skip at some point. This is whole another topic, but don't worry, upcoming days I will release the best way to upgrade your crystal technology for free to plays and low spenders step by step. All you gotta do is to subscribe to not miss it. Now, let's talk about bastions. In Season of Conquest maps, you will see some structures or statues. Every statue belongs to a commander and give you certain quests, and once you complete those quests, they will give you some amount of crystals. But crystals are not the only thing that you are getting. By completing those quests, you also increase the favor level of those commanders. As their favor level gets higher, your crystal production speed in the mine increases. So you complete those quests, by the way you can complete maximum of 15 quests per day, and you upgrade their favor level to increase the crystal production speed of your crystal mine. That's all there is in Strife of 8 about Bastions, but in Heroic Anthem we have support skills. When you get a Bastion favor to level 6, you unlock their support skills. These skills will vary KVK to KVK, so they are not the same every single time, but those are simply extra skills that you can unlock and use on your troops. Level of those skills depends on your commanders though. Which means, let's say there is a Boudicca Bastion, and the support skill is Celtic Blood, which is her third skill. If you have that skill maxed on your Boudicca, then you unlock the max version from the Bastion. Or if that skill, let's say level 3, then you unlock the level 3 version, or if you haven't summoned the commander at all, then you cannot unlock that support skill because you just don't have the commander. So these are the bastions and support skill. A side note, to unlock a bastion in the first place, you must expand your coalition territory to that structure or to that bastion statue, which means you cannot unlock whatever bastion you find in the map. There is a rule to interact with those structures. Speaking of bastion quests, let's talk about Kahar. Some quest rewards you with Kahar's Bone Whistle, and with this item you can summon Kahar just like you summon Lohar. And when you kill Kahar, you get a bunch of crystals. Simple as that, but there are a few tricks that I want to share with you. In Crystal Technology, there are some certain texts that increases the amount of crystal you get from defeating Kahar, so you shouldn't summon Kahar and kill him the moment you get those Bone Whistles, you should first work on those texts that increases the amount of crystal you get. And when you are ready to kill Kahars, you should summon more than one and kill them together to save action points. Attacking Kahar costs a lot of action points, so what you can do, just like chaining Barbarians, you should also chain Kahars. So summon a few Kahars and chain them with your YSG if you have them to save as many action points as you can. So Crystal Mine, Barbarians, Barbarian Forts, Bastion Quests and defeating Kahar are the ways to earn crystals as free to play. But if you are a low spender, I highly recommend purchasing that daily crystal thing in Supply Depot. It costs $5 but it gives you daily crystals just like a gem supply and it's the best value for money purchase in Season of Conquest. 
Now let's talk about season coins. When you unlock new technologies in Research Center, the game rewards you with season coins. Those coins can be spent in a season shop. We have legendary city skins, season of conquest accessories, legendary commander sculptures, legendary equipment chests, and some cosmetic stuff. You can buy these things with your season coins, but keep in mind that no matter what you do, you won't have enough coins to unlock a legendary city skin in 1kvk only. It usually takes 2 to 3 kvks to gather enough coins for a city skin. But there are great accessories and with the next update we will be able to purchase those legendary sculptures and materials with a discounted price, so it's good news. In Season Shop there are also KVK equipment pieces but you can only unlock those with Conquest coins and the way to get those coins are challenges. They are only earned by completing a certain Crusader achievements like kill this amount of troops etc. But your main focus should be Season coins because legendary accessories are more important. In a short time we will release a video about the Season of Conquest accessories and which ones to purchase first. Don't forget to subscribe to not miss that video. Last but not least we have Hall of Heroes. In Season of Conquest, you get your half of that troops back after it's finished and in this section you can see the amount of troops that you lost during your KVK or how many troops that you will get back when it's finished. That 50% return is one of the reasons why I recommend free to play to fill structures and rallies with T5. So we briefly covered Crystal Tech, Crystal Mine, Bastions, Ways to Earn Crystal, Season Shop, etc. The big question is, should free to plays or low spenders play Season of Conquest? You might get surprised, but I think yes. There are many upsides and downsides for us in this KBK format, but I think rewards in Season Shop are decent. Also, older kingdoms have much better leadership and it's a lot better to play in a settled, peaceful kingdom. Plus, you get access to all commanders in Wheels and MGEs, you get more commander options in Card King and Daily Chests if you're a low spender, but Crystal Tech obviously makes it impossible to perform better than a spender regardless of your commanders or equipment. But it is what it is. What do you guys think? Should free-to-play keep migrating back to earlier KVKs or they should just go with the flow and play Season of Conquest? I'm really curious about your answers to that question, so make sure to tell us what you think. Now, for people who stay with me until the end, I have an extra crucial tip. In Season of Conquest, you can teleport to your coalition territory, but it is not a safe zone. So always make sure that you are in your alliance territory, not just in coalition territory, if you don't want to get rallied and zeroed. And if you're wondering that should you use T4 or T5 in Season of Conquest, make sure to watch this video. I see you on the next one. Bye.